we are going to be doing some, something called an interactive read aloud. And that means I have a story that I get to read to you. So your brains get to take a little break because they're listening. But do you think I might have some questions for you? Yes, ma'am. You better believe it. Because Mrs. Powell's not going to give you a complete brain break, right? Yeah. I'm still going to expect you to listen, to be thinking, to use some of those strategies that good readers do. Okay? Even though I'm the one that's reading the story to you today. Now, most of you have been in my room for a small group before. You know my expectations. I expect you to listen because my job is to teach you how to be a better listen reader. Reader. And your job is to listen and read. learn. My job is to teach you how to be a better reader. Your job is to listen and learn. learn. Thank you. So I will expect that you'll sit on the floor, how you're comfortable, but that you'll be listening the whole time. Okay? Sounds great. So our objective today is kind of going to spread out today and tomorrow. So I'm going to get to come back tomorrow and be another guest in Miss Rollins' room. So repeat after me. I can determine. I can determine. The message. The message. In a story or poem. In a story or poem. Now let me read that one time through all the way and then you can read it with me. I can determine the message in a story or poem. Read with me. I can determine the message in a story or poem. So what that looks like is some stories that we read, some movies that we watch, they're trying to teach us something. They're trying to tell us a message. And so we're going to be looking at a story and trying to figure out what the author might be trying to tell us. What are we going to take away from this book that's going to help us understand? Silas? Did you have a question? What's your question, what sir? What does determine mean? Great question. Silas says, what does determine mean? That's a huge word in your objective. Determine means we're going to figure out. Okay? Like, you are the detectives, and your job is to determine the message or figure out the message in the story. Thank you for asking that, Silas. So our DOL, and it's going to be spread out today and tomorrow. You're not going to show me that you can do this until tomorrow. Your DOL is, after listening to a story, I will orally state the message in the story. Orally state just means you're going to tell me. Okay? You're going to tell me the message of the story after you listen to the story. Okay? And then I always have, if you've been in my room, a sentence stem that we're working towards. So when you are done with this, you're going to be able to complete the sentence stem. I think the message of this poem is blank because blank. So you're going to have what you think the message is and why you came up with that. Thumbs up if that sounds like a great plan. All right, so we're going to get started, but I need to get your brain rocking and rolling before we start. So when I say ready to rock, you say ready to roll. Ready? Ready to rock? Ready to roll. Ready to rock? Ready to roll. There we have it. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to split you into three. Partners of three. I guess groups of three. And I'm going to give you a picture. Okay? Your job, don't pick your groups because I'm going to pick them for you. Your job is going to be to write down, kind of like a brain dump, anything this picture makes you think of. If this picture makes you think of spaghetti and meatballs, you write spaghetti and meatballs. You're all going to have a marker in your hand and you're going to have three minutes to write. And I want you to write anything that your brain thinks of. So that means if my partner is Julia and Vershawn, if we're a group of three, and this is our picture, and it's down here on the floor, we each have a marker. I don't care if you're writing upside down, you're just writing whatever you think of. That might even mean that you're drawing a picture if you don't know the word for it. Okay? So there are different pictures. I'm going to give everyone a marker. Actually, I'm going to have Juliet help me out with that. Can you give everyone a marker? They get what they get and they don't throw a fit. And we're going to spread out just a little bit and then we're going to have three minutes, okay? Let's do, I'm sorry, sir. Rosalie, Tatiana, Silas, I want you to scoot right over here. Corday, you're going to turn around with your reads and Elizabeth. And this is your picture. Let's have, Yuren, can you turn around with this group? Yuren, can you turn around with this group? Vershawn, Emilianos, and Alex, can you scoot over here? And this is your picture. I'm sorry, Alexios, Emilianos is right over here. Emilianos and Jeremiah, you're going to work together, and this is your picture. Okay? Raise your hand if you don't have a 
marker yet? Don't need to do that. Just words, phrases, real quick. Like that. Perfect. You go and find us anything that you can think about. How do you spell what? How do you spell beach? Oh, you spell what? You know what? I don't even care about spelling if you're just writing down the sounds that you hear, whatever you think of in your brain, okay? Silas, keep going. Your brain's working all the time. We're not stopping. I look at that picture and I think so many different things. So everything that you think of. Good, Rashawn. You have one more minute. I want those circles full. Color water. I put color water. Just spell it out. Changing the world. What else? What do they have? Where are they at? Anything. Write it, write it, write it. 30 more seconds. Everyone's markers are on the paper. Keep writing. Alex, what else do you think of? Have you ever seen that picture? No, you've never seen this? Do you know what it is? Okay, so how do you know what it is? Think about this. Think of think of school, a map. Where have you seen that before? Okay, write it. Anything you think about. Watch the cord. Go around this way. 
What's your sentence, Tim? My sentence, Tim, is a globe. Oh, my sentence, Tim, is this picture made us think of. My sentence, Tim, is this picture that made us think of. It's, it's round, it spins, it has water on it, and it has Colorado on it. Thank and you, it has Jeremiah. States. And it has states. Corday, come on up. Here, I'll put it up here. This picture. Oh, I love how they drew pictures. Sometimes our brains think in pictures instead of words, and I'm completely okay with that. Corday, this picture made us think of. This picture made us think of the uh, the space. This picture made us think of space. Yuri, what did he say? I think he said this picture made us think of space. Thank you for being such a great listener. I appreciate it. What else did it make you think of, Corday? Um, the sun and the planet, but we did not know how to draw. It looks like you did to me. I know that there's a planet that has rings called Saturn, and that's what this looks like to me. So I think your group did a great job. Excellent. Uh, Pedro, come on up. If you are not the speaker, you are certainly doing a great job listening. Thank you. Okay. This picture made us think of? This picture made us think of recycling and saving the world. This picture made you think of recycling and saving the world. And I see those words on there, too. Great work. And I have, how about Alexios? Come on up. Nope, it's okay. Stay right there, Axel. Yeah. Real loud and proud. This picture made us think of. This picture made us think of. Um, seeing the planet. I'm going to see North America. Oh. If you couldn't hear him, Alexio said this picture made us think of North America. What else was your other part? And the North Pole. And the North Pole. Okay, I want you to turn to your group and give them a looking good. If you've been in my room, you know that. Looks like this. Ready? Looking good. So turn to your partner real quick. Give them one more in case they missed it. Looking good. Think in your brain for a second. Everyone had a different picture, but they were all kind of about the same thing. Okay, so I had picture a globe. I had people recycling or cleaning. I had kids planting. I had the planet. What are you thinking, Pedro? What do you think? It's all about Earth. It's all about Earth. Okay. Jeremiah, you're making me nervous with this. Can I have you move back to right there? I just don't want it to come unplugged or anyone to trip on it. Okay. One, two, three. Turn your body to me. So next month, there's a special holiday coming up called Earth Day. You guys are going to get a sneak peek at part of the second grade kind of unit on taking care of the Earth. And that's a book I picked today because I thought you were writing a sneak peek for it. Before we start reading our book about the Earth, there is one word I think you're going to need to know. Okay? There's one word I want to talk about ahead of time. That word is imagine. Say imagine. Imagine. Maybe you've heard this word before. I always like to use my imagination, which is a big word. When we're reading, this is something I love to do. I love to imagine. So let's talk about what that word means. Imagine means to form a picture in the mind of something. Repeat after me. To form, to form a picture, a picture in the mind, in the mind of something. Of something. Point to where your mind is. It's inside. You can't really touch it. You all have brilliant minds because you're all students at Mountain Vista, and your teachers are making your minds brilliant. So to imagine something, you don't necessarily see it, but you're making the picture in your mind. So if you can see this little girl, Rashad, can you help us out because maybe they can't see us back there. What is she imagining? He's, riding, he's imagining riding a horse. She's imagining riding a horse. So my sentence is, I can imagine myself riding a horse just like the character in my story. 
So she's writing a story about someone riding a horse, and she's imagining that she's that character. Here's your sentence, Sim. On a cold and snowy day, I like to imagine I am at the... Okay, stop for a second. Close your eyes. If it's cold outside and your fingers are turning to icicles, where would you like to imagine that you are at? And this could sound different with a bunch of different people. If it's cold, it's a winter day, ooh, your teeth are chattering, where would you imagine, where would you like to be? Okay, so let me read that again. Open your eyes. On a cold and snowy day, I like to imagine I am at the beach. Okay, I'm going to listen to a couple friends' answers. Let's have everyone stand up who ate cereal for breakfast. Now sit down if you're wearing blue pants. Did you eat cereal for breakfast? Okay, come on, sit down. Did you eat cereal for breakfast? Did you eat cereal for breakfast? Okay. First on, on a cold and snowy day. On a cold and snowy day, I would like to be on the beach. Okay, I didn't hear the word imagine. Can you help me out, Jeremiah? You're sitting down because you have blue pants on. Start over. On a cold and snowy day. On a cold, cold snowy day, I would like to imagine I'm on the beach. Would you like to imagine being at the beach on a cold and snowy day? And that might make you feel warmer. Okay, let's say yee-haw for Vershawn. One, two, three. Yee-haw! Okay, Juliet. She's shivering. She wants to be at school where everything is nice and warm. Let's give Juliet an oh yeah. Oh yeah. Corday. On a cold and snowy day, I like to. What's our word we're working on? Imagine. Good. I. I am. At the at the at home. At home. Maybe snuggled up under a blanket with some hot chocolate. Give Cordea. Uh huh. Uh huh. So no one said anything like on top of a mountain or skiing. Did anyone think that in their brain? I know Miss Vidovich did. So we all kind of pictured different things. Maybe we imagined ourselves doing things that we liked. If it was snuggled up watching Star Wars, or if it was reading a book, or if it was on a beach making a sandcastle. Yes. So that's using your imagination. You're making a picture in your mind, and that's what our story is all about today. I'm going to go ahead and tape our new vocabulary word up here, so if you need help remembering that, you can peek up at the picture. And let's get started. This first time I read the story, you're just thinking about what it means. We're not going to dive really deep into it until tomorrow. We're just thinking about what the story means. What's this about? My story today is called Earth Dance. It's written by Joanne Ryder and illustrated by Norman Gorbati. So that's who drew the pictures. Okay? Earth Dance. On the bottom for me so everyone behind you can see. You're going to see some of these. These are just to help me because... Believe it or not, this book has no page numbers. So when I went back to write some questions, I couldn't write, hey, on page such and such, I need to ask this question. So I had to do sticky notes, okay? Earth dance. Very first word of the story. Imagine you are standing tall in an empty space. Because I'm a good reader, and I will own that, I'm a good reader, I'm already imagining myself standing tall in the empty place. Stretch your arms out wide and slowly spin around. Okay, so now I'm picturing myself standing up tall, my arms are out wide, and I'm slowly spinning. Imagine you are growing taller than the trees, taller
taller than the hills, head high in the sky, you are growing so large, so tall, no one can see all of you now. What would it be like to be so big that no one could see all of you? It would not be fun. Imagine you are dancing in space. Oh, I'm thinking about the group that had the planets. Imagine you are dancing in space even larger than the moon. Spinning around, you are round, wrapped in a quilt of bright colors. Oh, my brain stops me right there, because I've heard the word quilt before. In fact, I have a quilt at home. Does anyone know what that word is? Jeremiah, help me out. What is a quilt? A quilt is like a blanket. A quilt is like a blanket with lots of different colors on it usually, right? Like they sew together patches of fabric, so it has lots of colors. Let me read that again. Spinning around, you are round, wrapped in a quilt of bright colors. Blue flowing seas, dark green woods, and deserts of golden sand. You are twirling so gracefully, carefully, not even the sand moves as you spin. Okay, so good readers right now, they're kind of thinking, what am I? I am so tall that no one can see all of me at once. I'm dancing in space. I'm larger than the moon. I'm wrapped in colors that sound like blue seas, golden sand, trees. Vershawn, is your brain starting to think that you are something? What do you think? I think I'm the earth. Or Sean thinks he is the earth. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You're in, I agree because? I agree because the earth is tall, bigger than the moon. So you're imagining that you are the earth? That's a hard thing to imagine. We are itty bitty compared to the earth. Elizabeth, I agree, I disagree. I agree. Why? So some of the clues the author is giving us helps you figure that out, helps your mind think. Pedro, can you imagine what it would be like to be the earth? Would it be really, you would be huge, right? And you would constantly be spinning? Let's keep reading and see if, we, if that's right, if we can figure out some more. You are large and grand, and your voice is a proud roar of icebergs cracking. Waterfalls tumbling. Your whisper is a breeze murmuring through the reeds. A tiny wave lapping land. Your whisper is a breeze murmuring through the reeds. Maybe they're talking about the wind. Wiggle your shoulders. Everybody wiggle your shoulders. Now imagine wiggling your shoulders if you were the earth. Wiggle your shoulders and mountains tremble and quake. Shake your hair and feel windswept grasses tickle your face. Hmm. Wiggle your shoulders and mountains tremble and quake. They kind of give us some clues here. What would happen if the earth wiggled its shoulders? Yuritsa, what do you think? The earth is going to move, and that's going to cause some other things to happen, right? We've talked about cause and effect. If the earth wiggles its shoulders, does the earth really have shoulders? No. But we're imagining. If the earth wiggles its shoulders, Eurytus is right. Things are going to move. So what could happen? What are some clues we have on the page? Does, has anyone seen anything like this before? No. A volcano. You got it. A volcano where lava shoots out. An earthquake. Because the earth is moving, different things are going to happen. My goodness. You are streaked with roads and bridges, spotted with farms and factories. Up your hills and down your rivers, cars and ships carry people from one place to another. All places on you. 
What did the author say carries people? Who was being a good listener? Let me read that again. Up your hills and down your rivers, cars and ships carry people from one place to another. All places on you. If you know that answer, blow it into your hand. Let me read it again. Up your hills and down your rivers, cars and ships carry people from one place to another. All places on you. If you heard what carries people, blow it to your hand. Silas, what carried people on that page? Cars and ships. Thank you for being a good listener. Cars and ships carry people. Can you say that whole sentence? Cars and ships carry people. Thank you. I know in my brain some other things on earth that carry people that the author didn't choose to write about. People can get around on cars and ships. What else, Axel? Train. Trains. Jeremiah. Planes. Planes. Those were the two things I was on thinking foot? of. On foot. You can just walk to get where you're going. You are where crickets leap, rabbits hop, and children run and run. Imagine them leaping and dancing with you as you spin. You are where people meet, talking and singing and laughing aloud. Imagine hearing them all humming. I'm sorry, imagine hearing them all, their voices humming as you twirl. Why out? Would that be loud for the earth? Yes. If everyone was talking at one time, probably your teachers have felt like that. If the whole class is talking at one time, oh, that's too much noise. The voice is humming as you twirl. Think of all the people on earth. If we all chose to yell at the exact same time, we might cause our own earthquake. Turn your face to the bright sun and cities wake up, yawning to morning. Behind you, oh wait, so I'm thinking that half of the earth is maybe in the sun while the other half is in the darkness? Because you're so big that you can, no one can see all of you at one time. So half of you would be in the light, in the sun, and the other half behind, it would be nighttime. And I know that in parts of the world where we are at school, other kids in other countries are sleeping. Because they're on a whole different part of the earth. Isn't that cool to think about? But we're used to our schedule, but if we got on a plane and went all the way over to another country, it would be hard because they would be sleeping when we're used to being awake. And then you would want to go to bed and they would be like, let's go play. Hold those thoughts for me. Behind you, cities in darkness, turn on the lights, go to sleep and dream. As you spin, you bring day, then night to everyone who calls you home. You spin around and also dance around the sun, bringing summer, bringing winter, when snowflakes touch and cover you and people Leave soft footprints on your snowy field. What do people leave on snowy fields? What do people leave on snowy fields? When you know, I want you to tap your knee. I have almost everyone. Alexios, let me read that page again. And people leave soft footprints on your snowy fields. What do people leave on snowy fields? Thank you for being a good listener. People leave? Can you say people leave footprints? Thank you for being such a great listener. Thumbs up? Good, you all heard that in the story. Almost done. You are every place people rest in a place everyone knows best. You are older than anyone, yet each day, you are where new life grows, flowers bud, and babies are born. You are home to ants and lizards, fish and dragonflies, roses and redwoods. You are shelter for people who may never meet, but share one thing. You are their home. Sounds like a pretty important job. Dance slowly. Spin gently and carry them through space. May they hear your whispers, feel your strength under their feet, and treasure you. For you are home. You are precious earth. Yes! Yes, that makes me that excited too. So I just want to think about, 
I was going to get into our second read today, but I think I'll ask Ms. Rollins if I can come back tomorrow for that and then come back the next day for read three. I might just take over your class the rest of the year. I just want to think about what this story is about, okay? So that's going to lead me into my next sentence, Tim. This book describes. We're not talking about the message yet, just what the book is about. So think for a second. You've got about 30 seconds. This book describes, and describes is another word for tells me. This book tells me, this book describes, and think about the pages that we read and what the author was asking us to do. Okay, that's a tricky question. This book describes, Juliet, can you leave that alone, please? You're being such a good listener. Pedro, do you think you can help us out with that? This book describes, this book describes the earth. This book describes the earth. You were going to say that too? Turn to Pedro and give him a yeehaw. One, two, three. Yeehaw! This book describes the earth. Can anyone build on that a tiny bit? Because the author could have wrote, the earth is round, the earth is big, the earth is in space, the earth has people. But the author chose to do something else that we're going to talk about tomorrow. This book describes what it would talk about. be like. Exactly what my brain was thinking. Can you say that loud and proud? Be like. This book describes what it would be like to be the earth. So I'm going to combine yours. Can you repeat after me? This book describes. This book, book describes, describes what it would be like. What it would be like to be the earth. To, to be, be the earth. Tomorrow we're going to get back into it. We're not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to talk about why the author chose some words that she chose and certainly why she wrote them the way that she wrote them. Did you notice how some of the words were going down the page and some of them were going around? We're going to talk about that tomorrow. But for now, I want you to kiss your brain for being a great listener. And you are done with part one. All right, thank you.